Perez. Walter makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Really messed that up again. I forgot to turn my speaker off. Oh, I'm a wonder with a cut and paste. Hello and welcome to ABW Live, episode number, I think it's 395. Wow. Have you, lot, yeah, have you lot got anything better to do with your time than come and sit here with... We're two old gooners talking nonsense about stuff that we don't really get because one of us is poo and the other one was eating cheese sandwiches. <laughs> With me this afternoon, none of ABW can bother to turn up. If you're watching this, unless you've got kids, they've all spent all afternoon in the WhatsApp group putting pictures of their kids going, this is how I'm trying to keep mine happy. I'm doing this with mine. Um Yeah, so with me this afternoon is Stan the man from sunny Canada. Is it sunny in Canada, Stan? Yeah, it's not bad today. It's not even. It's just still the morning, almost eleven o'clock. Shit, I bet at eleven a.m. I was still looking at the, the clock, going, "Oh, I've got hours yet." Uh, uh, not a bad result, was it? Not a bad one at all. I mean, as I as uh, you kind of uh, told the viewers at the beginning of the show, I kind of spent the first ten minutes watching it on the toilet, which was quite novel. <laughs> Had a bit of a heavy bit of a heavy night last night, which was uh, coming back to haunt me. A very what scrappy. I was just well. I was partaking in the in the IPAs last night. I found out this year that's Indian pale ale. I had it no is. idea. Invented in India or by Indians or fuck all to do with India. No idea at all. No idea at all. But um, that was a very scrappy win. Mm. You know, a very scrappy win. But at the end of the day, it's a very valuable three points. And I'll take scrappy wins and ugly wins if it means that we're going to get to where we need to get to. A very mature display years ago months ago we'd have completely shit the bed on that we were wasting time when we needed to holding on to the ball uh, going down every chance we got um playing the only thing we didn't do is a couple of times we had the chance to run it into the corner um Tavares uh, no yeah. Conga and and Eddie and you didn't I mean that's probably because you're young and you you're full of the joys of spring but you should have done that. There's a couple of things like that they should have done. But let's go and have a look and see who's in the chat box. See if anybody's turned up. Ah, uh, oh, the first person was Paul Nell. Then it's Mr. Waffles and Loki and Cy. And is that Jack or Jock? Jack. Hello, Jack. Are you new? Are you Jack Wilshire? How did Jack Wilshire get on today? I'll have I'll go and have a look while I'm waffling. It's I've got a, a tab, special a bookmark, specially saved for Jack Wilshire. They lost one nil. So they've now lost four games in a row. And before that, they drew four games in a row. Yeah. Arhus again din. And that is a very wonderful accent. Uh Waffles can't stick around. I've things to see, people to do. You're an absolute disgrace, David. Uh, Jack, uh, what time are you starting? We should have been half past, but Stan was late. At least he turned up, though. I say late. It's about half past. Never turn up on time. Stephen, all of us, that is. Stephen, uh, it, we were 10 minutes late for the preview show as well. We have nothing if not continuous. No, I don't know what the word is. Consistent. Uh, consistent. Consistently like late. Answer. Consistently inconsistent. Uh, Phil Macker is there, Stephen Edwards, and uh, oh, Super is there. That's what I like to see. Yeah, hello, boys. Hello, boys, indeed. Um, and lots of numbers is there. Great win. Uh, Jimmy's there. What a win. What else is there? RBX. Hello, Treacle. Tres Punto, which I think is um, uh, Spanish for three pints with uh, your finest IPA. I thought a Punto was a car. What? I thought Punto was a car. I think it is. Rudy's there. I am done, boys. Can't take no more. Why are you done? We won. Now what else could you want? Oh, here he is. The man himself. <laughs> the the ABW legend who, who who's like a, 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 a long forgotten love that you uh, constantly yearn after. It's Jeff. He is on the beach in Hawaii. He's having a lovely time. And he's got his family there, and he has spent most of the time getting sunburned and sending me messages. Jeff, we do miss you. You could do a podcast from Hawaii. You'd be the first. Or do you prefer that picture? I've got two of Jeff because he's that special. 
Mm. Oh, we're talking about people who used to pod with us. Have one of Simon doing over. It's not November. He always looks like that. Deviant. That's why. Um, right. Let's uh, lineups. What did you think when we, you saw the lineup for the game? Were you um, pleasantly surprised? Um, much what I was expecting. The only thing that I thought might be an experiment, I, th- I, I thought as Tommy Asu was coming back in, Perhaps we would see Cedric moving over to the left and Tavares being taken out, but he he, he continued to to stick with Nuno Tavares. So there wasn't really anything in the lineup at all that was of a surprise to me. I was glad to see that El, El Neni was being continued with, and I thought it would be that the way that um, him and Arteta were hugging and kissing coming off the pitch at the end of the last game. And um, just on on that note, I thought he'd done very well today, El Neni. Hmm. Yes, a couple of half decent through balls as well. Oh yeah, uh, which is uh, which is good to see when you haven't played for so long and then you just get dropped straight back in. It did the same. Uh, Josh was saying in the preview show, it did the same for Egypt. Didn't really play much for us, and all straight to the Afcon with Egypt. Got to the final, even playing almost every minute of every game, I think, and then didn't play for us again for two and a half months. Come straight in back to back games against two really tough games: Man United at home and West Ham away. And uh, yeah, I'm quite I'm quite surprised with that. That uh, not surprised. I'm I'm pleased by it because uh, he's my Egyptian brother. Uh, I made hardly any notes in the first half. I think I made up until the goal. The only note I made is interesting to see how we are playing out with it from the defence because it seems to be there was lots of get the ball facing Ramsdale, hold the ball, swivel, change direction and pass it out to someone. They must have done that seven or eight times in the first 37 minutes. And I thought that does make a change rather than passing it to somebody else. They're getting it, turning it and then clearing it themselves or or running off with it, which is like you were saying, with a lot of it was Xhaka and Del Nenny were doing that a lot. That was really nice to see. It seems like they've and Ramsdale was taking the long kicks again which he hasn't really been doing much of for the last few games. Yeah, it's good to see that there was a little bit more variety and not continuously always trying to play it out from the back because sometimes I do think that we put ourselves under pressure. But that first half, watching that first half, it, it, there were times when it seemed that Arsenal was the team that was playing in the middle of two semi-finals. Mm. I thought that we were quite I thought that we were quite leggy. I thought the yeah. passing was incredibly sloppy. The first touches were heavy and the passing in the final third for us you know we'd either not get to the guy get the balls would get, would be cut out and turned over really sloppy. So when we did score that first goal and when it came at about I think it was about half an hour around there 35 minutes or so I thought well it's come at a good time all we've got to do now is hold on. You know, all, it's, all we've got to do is hold on now to half time and try and regroup. And of late, I've always been a little bit worried when Arsenal score a goal because invariably we seem to go behind again. Or you know, we, we always seem to history. we always seem to let them back in very mm. quickly after scoring. So why do you think that was today? Was it because uh, West Ham are concerned about the stuff, or we just really are on our game at the moment? We're on a really decent run of form, beating teams that not that long ago we'd have struggled against. Well, look at where both of the goals came from. I mean, it's, it, I mean, I don't know the last time when I saw Arsenal scoring from a corner. I know that we haven't been letting them in for a while, but we don't really see us scoring too many. You know, for Arsenal scoring from corners, it's a bit like waiting for a bus, isn't it? You don't get mm-hmm. one. You wait for ages and ages and ages, and then two turn up at once. So I was pretty pleased to see that we're having a little bit of variety to our game and adding that to our game. That is important. The more um, strings you have to your bow, the better you're going to be at playing your stringed instrument. I think that's the right saying, something like that. Um, who are you? Uh, K-Man says, um, hope Tommy is okay. Don't understand playing him for 77 minutes. Yeah, there was some discussion about that in the WhatsApp group saying that uh, he should have played half an hour. I mean, he should have played 60 minutes and then rested. But it didn't seem to be too bad, did it? It just seemed to be a, maybe a little bit of a pull because he, uh, he was running around quite a lot, moving. I noticed we were playing three at the back at times as well and letting the... The other two, uh, the other sides go off. The other Tavares was lot doing, making lots of runs, and then um, uh, Tommy Ashley would slip into the back three, and then that was quite a lot. And then I noticed when he was doing that, Erdegaard was coming over the right hand side and balancing out the midfield like that. That was interesting to see. Yeah, trying to pull their players wide so that uh, when Eddie comes running into the middle, the, I think the ploy is that he's followed in. Yeah by the centre-backs, so that leaves some space for the, the wider players to sort of like get into. 
And oddly, that's how they scored their goal. Um, yeah. Just having a look at what people are saying. Phil Max says, West Ham certainly weren't flowing. Arnie, you have... You, I don't know why I'm trying to read it in the small writing, read it in the big writing. You have to have a heart defibrillate when you go and watch Arsenal games. Ah, oh, there's a question there from Anne. Lots of numbers. I'll save that for later. Um, okay, I disagree with Cayman. Let's go back to my notes. And I've put, right, here we go. 37th minute. Noble gave it away in midfield. Erdegaard put it through to Eddie, who had a really good shot and out for a corner. And at that point, I was thinking, oh, Eddie, you've wasted our probably one of the few chances we're going to get this game to try and score. 38 minutes, Dan. Goal. Big Bob. Saka takes the corner. Big Bob comes charging in after shoving, Lanz shoving Lanzini or pushing or getting past Lanzini, whichever way you want to put it, out of the way and scores Tony Adams style or Steve Bold style or Martin Keown or Sol Campbell style. One of those classic um, Arsenal centre-back scoring yeah. from a corner. That's beautiful, wasn't it? You have to say about Rob Holden that every time that he's he's come into the team to help us out, he's done really well. There's been a few games where he's come in to shore the game up and added another defender and he hasn't put a foot wrong. And starting again today, he's contributed with a goal. So I've always felt that he's the, he's one player that, you know, from some of our older players that I'd like to see continue with us as a squad player. Because players like him and El Nene, they don't seem to cause too much trouble about lack of minutes. But when they do come in, they're fairly solid. And if we are going to be fighting in four competitions next season, we're going to need more bodies. And I think Rob Holding has proved that he's someone that can be relied upon. Much like El Nene, he needs to stay at the club next season. Yeah. Both of them do. I mean, look at that picture, people at home on the bus and on the toilet. Picture there of um, Big Bob Holding with his beautiful hair. And even Jack has got that look on his face of, oh my God, what have you just done? Wonderful to see. Look, he's, in fact, Big Bob's done the double finger point. Look at it. His other hand's pointing down. Yeah. He, that is, he's, he's doing a half past nine, I think that's known as in the dance move trade. <laughs> is it? That's, okay. that's a thing of, that's a thing of beauty. <laughs> what, are the, um, what are the people in the chat saying about that? Oh, okay, man. Uh, Holdings, first Premier League goal. Happy for the bloke. He's been with us since 2013, 14. Been a very, very long time. One of the longest, him and El Nenny are the longest serving players at the club, I think. Yeah. Um, and, right, uh, Hector, who won the Spanish Cup. Excellent. Even though he has no knees or hips or whatever it is. Um, well, a question there from Phil. I should come to that later. Um, Pete Geary says, uh, poor game, but I did say we would win 2 1. I said we'd win 2-1 as well. All these people saying we're going to get two, three, four goals. You're, you're all on hippie crack. Right, the next point I've got, 39th minute stand. Great save from Ramsdale. Just tipped it out from a West Ham corner. And then he made another follow-up save after that. It's really magnificent to see him back in really good form like that, isn't it? And that's a great save. Yeah, he gave me the horrors a little bit later on. But um, um, when he came sliding through... Like he was coming down a water slide at a fun park. But I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, he did pull off a really good save there to just touch the ball over. He is. Uh, I mean, all the best goalkeepers are a little bit eccentric, aren't they? And I think yeah. he, he typifies that perfectly. Uh, so I says, Holdini. That's it. Very true. Uh, next point I have got, great to say, ah, oh, here we go, goal from Bowen, 44th minute. Tavares, this is part of the tactics for Arteta, it's not all Arteta, um, Tavares' fault, because I was then watching the rest of the game, the yeah. defence, and they are, they do bunch up when they're attacking, which I thought was a little bit weird. You need to have someone out there to stop the people getting in the crosses. So Tavares, so far out of position that they attack down the right, so much space, they get a cross in to Bowen, who takes it really well and half volleys it in. Now, have you any idea why Tavares has been told to stand near Holding and Gabriel? Shouldn't there be someone in that right-hand side to try and block those crosses as they're coming in? I don't know if it's something that he's been told or whether he just has um, a, a poor sense when it comes to positioning because, you know, one of the thoughts that I think Nuno Tavares does have and something that I've, I've identified in the past is that his positioning sometimes does seem a little bit poor. And you do see Mikel Arteta is constantly shouting over it and shepherding him and telling him where to be. But as as for today, I, I have no idea. Good. Simple answer. Um, and that's it, people. That's all I've got for the first half. Two goals. I was uh, My Tesco shopping has just been delivered and I've had a, a monster. I've got a whole new range of sugar-free drinks. Did you know that? 
They only used to have a couple. Now they've got loads. They've got one called Ultra Gold and another one called Melon. I don't even like melons, but I bought it anyway. That's the kind of guy I am. So then uh, I had some cheese rolls at half time. They were the Tesco's um, chunky cheese rolls. They have m- m- um, cheese. They melt into the rolls. <gasps> Filthy. And then I had three of those rolls with some Emmental cheese in each one and a cup of coffee. Dirty boy. Filthy. What did you do at half time? Another poo? Uh, yeah, I did actually. I went and <laughs> another, had a bit of a loose stomach this morning. So I went and had another. Uh... I never sit on the throne for a bit, you know. And uh, I was just thinking, like, how, how again, you know, we just had to hold on to half time. There wasn't that long to go, really, and we just couldn't do it. And I was super worried at that point that we were going to sort of like uh, shoot ourselves in the foot because now we had the hard work of coming back. And then I was worried that we wouldn't be able to find a third, and we'd still be able to let them in, and maybe just walk away with points. So I was quite nervous. As Jam Rudy says, there El Nenny and Jacker were really were, were both good today. That was, I mean, that was the key to us doing so well. Plus, um, the, the, the star defensive performance from everybody, um, apart from Tavares, which is I know some people love him, but I still think he's not a, he's not a left back. He's got he needs to concentrate more on his defending and a little bit less on his. Look at me, I've got the ball and I'm running, running, running. Um, Nick has got some full sugar Dr Pepper. Nick, as a fatty, you're not allowed that. Put it down, pour it down the sink and go and get yourself some sugar-free. Uh, right, second half, Stan, 51st minute. Uh, Ramsdale, exclamation mark. You know where this is going. How was that not a booking, at least? Madness. That could have gone so wrong. Do you want to talk to the people through what happened and your thoughts on it? I, I never understand it when, when goalkeepers decide that they want to be an out player and just come running out to put in a tackle. I mean, just face up. Just stand your ground and, and and face up because he was he was in no man's land, right? When that ball broke through, I was like, someone's going to smack it into an empty net, which is the last thing you want. Nobody likes them kind of goals, do you know what I mean? And then you got Ramsdale who would have had egg on his face. And it was one of the angles that they showed when they showed the replay. It was like a tight angle. And out of nowhere, he just went sliding past on my screen on his bum. It was just like he was sat on a, uh, it was like he was sat on like a, a tea tray, a silver tea tray or something in the snow. And just went straight past. So luckily for us, that that didn't end in a that didn't end in in a goal. But it g- gave yeah. me the horrors for a bit. My heart was like going to jump out of my chest. I mean, if you if you would have been a, that, would have been the West Ham um, keeper that did that. The way he come comes herring out recklessly with his foot in the air, and then our player got a yellow card. If we were, if we were West Ham fans, you're thinking, hold on a second, he's come out studs up. Just sheer luck that he didn't make any contact with the bloke. And did he get the yellow card because it was a uh, it didn't touch him, but yet he dived? Or was no. there any explanation for that? Because I didn't hear them saying it. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. I Good. don't know. Um, oh, they were talking. But about he was Mellon. so he was so lucky that there wasn't any contact, and uh, you know it was the other card that got pulled out of the pocket. That was so lucky. <laughs> yes, because it's front pocket you know? yellow. I mean, is it? No, it's top top pocket red. Back pocket yellow. So I think they all have a, have a syndrome. Uh, yes. Uh, and says uh, Neuer syndrome. Mm, never go full Neuer. No, never do that. No. Uh, Phil says kamikaze, Rami moment, just no need. Uh, he's, he's thinking, what are you doing? And Arteta has got to have a go at him for that. Um, Sai so says, was it a red? No, we didn't even get, he didn't even get a yellow. Looking back at that, you'll think, I've, I've watched it three or four times now, and I still don't know how he got away with it. It's madness. Yeah, again, it's just not understanding the rules. Now, if that was, now, if that was Xhaka. <laughs> <laughs> the police would have come on and marched him, frog marched him off, and he'd be doing bird now. He'd be on his way to the Pentonville. Um, oh, here we go. Rudy's got a quote. Arteta, in England you say one ugly. In my opinion, today we won ugly. <laughs> Cheers, Rudy. Yeah. So I says it was a red for him. Femster um, says... Uh, Question, Tavares or Jenkinson? Well, one was a left back, one was a right back. What are you on about? You need, I need more information for that. Stefan is busy. <laughs> Steph, why are you wasting your time? We've got another WhatsApp group just for us gamers. He's, put, he's just built himself a new PC and he's putting in the workbench test of all the stats on it and everyone going, you're wasting your time, Steph. No one knows what it means. Showing off. Uh, he's got red walls. Don't like red steps. Such about to shout at my cat then. Anne says Mike Dean wasn't a colossal bell end for one match. 
we've actually had a bit of a run of luck, haven't we? Wanky referees that usually haters have been they've been going quite easy on us, haven't they? Yeah, quite surprised to have been because you know, any other day with with something like uh, what Ramsdale did, you're just giving them the opportunity, aren't you? You know, you're just giving them the opportunity to bollocks it up for us. Um, Stefan says, I care how we win. We, I don't, uh, he says, I, I think he means I don't care how we win. We just need to win. Jackasaurus, who's on Twitch. Hello, mate. He says, uh, better question. Tavares or Andre Santos? Oh, Andre Santos never had any future. Tavares has got some kind of future. We just don't know what it is yet. Uh, boy, Tendayo is there. Oh my God. Going to be playing champs league tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, Steph says, lol, Travis is replying, is he? Uh, well, don't trust Travis. Uh, Tremaine Johnson, even Bowen said the ref wasn't, said to the ref it wasn't a red, did he? Oh, well, that's that's nice of him. Um, and Boy10 says, uh, did I say tomorrow, bless I'm stupid, next season? <laughs> that's an easy mistake to make, boy. Um, right, where are we up to? 54th minute, Stan. The, um, this this little, uh, where is it? There we go. Get that beautiful picture up. Goal! Gabriel, Saka's corner is cleared. Martinelli gets it, launches it back across to the far post. And Gabriel, you see the replay. Gabriel, as soon as um, Martinelli got the ball, he started to look over and make his run to the far post. And then right. Martinelli made, uh, it's all Martinelli's run. Uh, made his own run, superb. That was mag- two centre backs scoring from kind of situations like that. Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. As I said uh, a little bit earlier, it's it's the variety that we're seeing now. We haven't scored. When was the last time we scored from corners? We just don't really do it anymore. It used to be something that we were quite good at. So mm. long may that continue. I mean, look at Eddie's because, face because look we're not. We're not getting <laughs> goals from the top end, right? So we need to have these goals coming in from other places around. You know, mm. other, other areas of the squad because, you know, Eddie had Eddie had a lot of chances today. And it seemed that in the chances that Eddie had, he'd done all of the hard work earlier on in the moves. You know, losing players, keeping on the ball, keeping himself strong, not getting knocked off, managed to wriggle him through. But then the end bits of what he was doing, it was just awful. Yeah, you it know? was a little bit weird because, but I suppose because he's young, that's a, a reason why he can have a, um, get away with it. But just look at Eddie's face. We're looking at this picture, people, and it's when Gabriel's coming over and he's he's doing the um I don't know, he's walking like an Egyptian or something. And then Eddie behind him is like, Oh my god, I've got an N64 for Christmas look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Go, oh look. And look, Rob Holt's so still got his fingers out. He's now doing the oh. that? Is that, a quarter, is that a quarter past nine now or quarter to three or what? He's going back in time. He's, the boy's time travelling. He's full of the fingers. It should be big big Bob the fingers holding. Yeah. <laughs> What are the people in the chat saying about this? Oh, we've got some more quotes. Uh, Tr- Tremaine says, great header. Um, Boy10 says, Andre Santos would have been stellar as a winger. Well, go check uh, go to Wikipedia, type in Andre Santos. Then on the left-hand side in languages, go pick on Portuguese, and it will bring you up his Brazilian Wikipedia, and you'll see that bloke was never a left-back, never a full-back. 14 goals in a season he scored once. The bloke was a bloody winger. Um, clock orange, big up lads. A win is a win. Poor performance, yes, very true. Jimmy, rumor has it Mike Dean has self combusted as he was not able to book half of the team. Oh, poor old boy. Uh, Rudy's got us another quote. Arteta says, quote, Massive win, especially given the circumstances. We gave ourselves lots of problems, but the team never gave up. In England, you say win ugly. From my point of view, today we won ugly. Excellent. Stephen Edwards, I said earlier, this is a win that we used to lose when we had European football worried for next season. Yeah, because we'll be playing two games a week then, won't we? We won't have much rest, but they're going to be bringing in loads of players in the summer stand, aren't we? Oh, yeah, exactly. We won't be the same outfit going in if we get to Champions League, so hopefully we'll be better equipped for it. Uh, Daniel... Shulen Fry says, uh, love this El Nenny passing forward guy. El Nenny is just brilliant. Sai says, either Stan brought referees onto the payroll or EPL is trying to keep the top four fights spicy. Uh, apparently on Match of the Day, people are going mad because yet again, Sane was, uh, Sane was killing people, getting away with it. I don't watch Match of the Day because it's full of arseholes. 
but it's just uh, the work, the, the Scouse Mafia everywhere, making sure that Liverpool get the uh, fighting as close to the title. But Man City are going to win it. Don't worry about that. I don't care if Man City win it. Jimmy H says Eddie showed that that he is not a top striker. Yeah. Does ninety percent, but can't do the other ten percent. Stand well. Yeah, well said. That, that, you know, that put me nail on the head there for Eddie. Does all the hard work. I thought today. Done all the hard work, and then all of a sudden he thought that he was Thierry Henry and that he could curl him in from outside the box when uh -huh. everyone knows that Eddie is like, you know, Eddie's, Eddie's, you know, he, he gets his bread from tapping him in. Yes, he does. And it's, uh, it was quite a few times that he's done that, but you're going to learn. But this is why Eddie's not the man for us next season. Well, he, he said in his he said in his interview, right, that about, you know, he was uh, whining about just a run of games. Well, he's getting his run of games now. Mm. You know. However, what you can see though with Eddie is, with Eddie, even though the finishing part of it isn't where it needs to be, a lot of the other stuff that he does, Lacazette weren't doing any of that. So you can see what we, you can see what we've been missing. Now you can see what we just need to add in. We just need a player that now that can actually score as well, and we'll be in much, in much better shape. Agreed. Russ Morgan says, "Lads, how are we doing?" Bad. Is it Charlotte? See, as soon as I see scene, yes, it is. It's uh, the, the no, it's the, not. It's Fran, the, the drawer. It's so Fran, it's Charlotte's her sister. I'm, I'm afraid, uh, Fran, you're gonna have to go and get your sister to change her name because uh, I'm gonna keep saying her name first because that's the first one I learned because you used it, you confused me. Ruby <laughs> says, Arteta says White will be assessed in the next few days. Saka and Tommy Ashu sound okay, he's not concerned about those two, which is very good. Uh, Fran says El Nenny was great again. Rudy, a quote from Arteta on holding to good people, good things happen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is nice. Uh, Rudy says holding was class today. Clock Orange says uh, we need a minimum of six players to forward, two midfield, two defenders, and we need a good right back, not a backup, because Tommy Asher, even though good, is an injury suspect. He certainly is. Um, next point I've got on my things. So we've done that goal. I've put three at the back question mark. We covered that a little bit. Good to see us playing much more compact. Yeah, because uh, we do plan to play. When we're leading the game, we do tend to, we have done in previous games, we've gone done the, the counter-attacking football, done lots of breaks. But after we scored that second goal stand, we were a lot more, a lot more compact, keeping the ball in midfield, not stretching the team out too much, almost saving energy and just making sure we didn't lose the ball. Kind of worked, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, I thought we were better in the second half than what we were doing in the first half, but still sometimes misplacing vital passes, you know, in vital areas of the pitch. Still a little bit sloppy in that, and the first touches as well. Feels but, then, a... but then again, I mean, that pass that El Nenny made out to, I think he sprayed it out to the left-hand side to Eddie. And then, as I said about doing the hard work, his first touch there was excellent, and he managed to hold on to the ball, but it was just the end product. But yeah, I was really happy for El Nenny again today, you know. And again, this this is one of those games that should put to bed the myth that he only passes sideways or backwards. Although there was a lot of there was a lot of that happening at times in our play, not not just from El Nenny, but all around that it was creeping in a little bit. But I'm being picky. <laughs> Phil's moaning because he's been putting a timeout by Nick. He called Nick fat. <laughs> That's why. And coming from Phil is a chunky monkey. There you go. That's why. <laughs> don't annoy, don't annoy Nick. Nick's got the ban hammer. It's, uh, he's having a bad day. I've dissed him for his um Dr. Pepper. Yes, I agree with what you were saying. I'm just looking to see if anything else has uh any other wonderful things have happened. Um no. Right. Uh, next one. I've put uh, 71st minute, Stan. Eddie put through on goal by a great run by Elneny, and Eddie put it wide. Great chance to score. That was one of about, what, three that he did that yeah. you were mentioning? But magnificent ball by Elneny, wasn't it? To have that vision to put... I think yeah. Elneny did one of those in the first half as well, and no one saw it coming, and it just ran off in, and one of the defenders got hold of it. But... Uh, yeah. There's no news on... Um, uh, what's his name? Party coming back, is it? So, looks like El Nenny might have a run for most of the rest of the season, hasn't he? Yeah, well, why not? If he continues, like if he it. continues what he's doing, you know, you've got Sambi in there. If, if somebody gets a bit tired and needs to be brought, brought off later on in the game, yes, true. Uh, 
and I think it's a lot better to work Sam being in that manner. You know? Yeah. Little bits at the end of games, you know, 20 minutes here and there. Right. And then I'm just... Uh, oh, I see what I've done. I've got this thing. For the last 20 minutes of the game, I count how long Ramsdale holds on to the ball for. 15 oh, yeah. seconds. <laughs> 11 seconds, then 78th minute, another good chance wasted by Eddie, then 12 seconds, and then Saka milking it. Lovely. That was, uh, you, you could see two or three times during the second half he did that. He went down, and went, oh, I'm dying. Dark arts, Dan. You need to you need to use the dark arts if you're going to get anywhere in football, don't you? Yeah, we, there's been, well, for so long now, that's part of the game that we've not been able to. To, to master and I was really pleased I think it was the other week with Paul Scholes was coming out you know and he was talking about um, Arsenal players and Mikel Arteta trying to manipulate the referee and Mikel Arteta turning around and getting the crowd going you know on decisions and stuff like that and he was really whining about it and it made me laugh because it was only like maybe a few weeks before that I remember seeing an interview with Gary Neville in the studio and he was saying that one of the things that Manchester good Manchester United were very good at and something that Arsenal need to learn is that he said yeah you know me and our team we were able to influence the referee in certain moments of the game we just knew how to, to how to do that and that's something that perhaps Arsenal need to learn well it seems like we're, we're catching on quick and I don't like it now no they don't like it up and Stan I don't uh, and puts uh, Nketia is putting in the effort in, just doesn't have the finish yet. We're not going to see the end product for him, are we? He's not going to stay for next season, is he? I mean, I, I just feel when it comes to Eddie Nketiah, me personally, I've seen everything that I need to see now. You know, whereas with Balogun, I haven't seen enough. You know, mm. I still there's still more about Balogun that I've not seen, but I've seen a lot of Eddie now over the last three or four seasons. And... At no point does there ever does it ever look to me that he may have something about him to even be the backup, let alone lead the line, and that and that's hurtful because we love seeing the striker come from the academy, right? That's what you we want. Do. That's what you want. Balogun's not having a good run of it either. He was uh, an unused sub yesterday as Middlesbrough beat Hull, was it, and beat Stoke three one at home, and in recent games uh, he didn't play that one. His last was on the twenty seventh. He got an assist in 61 minutes against Cardiff, then 29 minutes at Huddersfield, eight minutes against Bournemouth, 64 minutes against Hull, and then against the mighty Posh, he played 69 minutes and scored, and then he scored a couple of games before that. So he's had, a, in his last 10 games, he's got three goals and an assist. That's not bad, is it, for someone who's, how was he, still 19? He's well, 20. Least, he's, he's 21 in minutes. I mean, a lot of the time yeah. we have players that they go off on loan and they never yeah. get used. And then we Damn. bring them back early. It's a waste of time. A lot of the time it is an absolute waste of time and it's infuriating. Right. Uh, oh, I left your... Um, uh, Anne says, David Moyes crying about handball before... Did I read this out before? Or did I just read it in my head? I don't know. I don't listen. I don't listen to what I say. I have no idea what I'm going to say next. I, I, I don't listen to what you say either. <laughs> no? I, it's as big a surprise to me what comes out of my mouth as it is to you lot. No idea what's going to happen. Apparently, it's a sign of being autistic that you like to bite things. Sorry, Add Anna around. Huh? I was, I was joking. I said, sorry, did you say something? Yeah. Uh, I had Anna around the other night, and I said, I like to bite things. And she said, that's, that's a sign of being slightly autistic. So I bit her. <laughs> she did. <laughs> I didn't bite her, but she did say that. I do. If I see things, I go, oh, squishy things. Get the urge to bite them. Oh, someone walking past with my dog. With a dog. My dog? Never had a dog. Don't want a dog. Boy 10. When Wenger was too honourable to use the dark arts. Now, that is true. He was too honourable. Nick says, the Paul Skulls came out. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Nick, aren't you meant to be timing out Phil? He's been anti fattist can't have that. It's the 20, 2022 now. Not allowed. Uh, Stefan says, Skulls should never be on TV. He is an imbecile. They are all fucking imbeciles. Came out as Ginger and Jimmy's. But Eddie has had a run of... Run? Hold on. Eddie has run of the reputation. That doesn't make... That doesn't scan properly, does it, Stan? Doesn't, does it? No. Jimmy, you're doing it on purpose. Um, something about it. Run of two goals, and that's about it. Yeah. 
He yeah. comes in, he has to score a couple of goals, and then that's it for the rest of the season. I think oh, he has talking. an epic reputation of coming in and doing that. Okay, I got you. Boy 10 says, uh, don't worry, GFP, you can't surprise us. Oh, someone's having a delivery. I wonder what it is. It is, uh, you know, I really don't like that trend at the moment where people have like Terry Towling jogging bottoms and jackets and they're grey and they wear white trainers. What is that about? That is that's a, a lack of colour. No, I've got light blue trainers with orange laces in them. That's how extravagant I am. Anyway, no one cares about that. Thank you for smiling. Uh, Saka milking it lovely. Uh, more time wasting with Saka going down. We are good at this. It's true. Smithrow on for Saka. Smithrow had about, uh, well, with the, with the added on time, managed to get best part of 10 minutes. But bring him on in the 89th minute. Would you have liked to see ESR come on a little bit earlier? I think, again, it was just a bit of uh, time wasting. But um, he had a good little, he, had like a, he almost... Uh, managed to carve something out for us with some good work in the yes. box. It was tidy little footwork, wasn't it? Even my missus, my missus was had come in and was watching it at that point. And it's funny because um, I, it was a few months ago where I was watching the game and she's going, now who's that? And who's that? And who's that? And I went, that's Emil smith Rowe. And for some reason she went, I don't like him. So now, every time she's she does or I don't. She, for some reason she went, I don't like him. I don't know why she said it. But I think it was because she'd never really seen him before. So now, every time something happens or who scored in it, it's him, I always go, Emil Smith Rowe, you know, the one that you don't like. And she's always like, I never said that. I said, You did. You said, I don't like him. Oh. So it's like a, it's just like this thing that we have now. So, yeah, the one that she didn't like, done very well. <laughs> and almost carved something <laughs> out for us. Uh, so, I does like she like, she changed, them, changed her tune on him now, is she? Yeah, she keeps saying that she never ever said it and that he's not bad. I just didn't know him. She's a big fan of Gabrielle, though. She Good. likes Gabrielle. Lovely. Um, Ellis. Oh, our very own Ellis is there. Ellis, hold your kid up to the screen and then you'll and we'll put this picture of Ellis looking cool. Where is it? There he is. Pre daddy days. Look at that. He has no worries, nothing. Now he's knee eyeing kids. Poor old Ellis. <sighs> and now he's breastfeeding. Can't be easy for you, Ellis. He says, Hello, boys. Great result. This is going to. This is going to the wire. It certainly is. Oh, Melvin Marks, who I've done podcasts right, with. Hello, Melvin. And so have you done podcasts with him? Yep. Disgraceful know. ESR didn't come on earlier. Yeah, I think I'd have liked to have seen him come on. Even uh, what do you think? Do you think the, the fabled Smith Rowe as a striker has got any legs to it? Because there's quite a few people who seem to think it has. I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, again, he had to, he he does have some good footwork. Like he, when he was in the box in that part I just mentioned, he had a few people around him. He's he's got some good close control on him. Hmm. Um, but you know, I'd 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 like us to be able to go out and actually get a couple of strikers. They won the game. Some bloke says they won the game. How on earth is that disgraceful? Oh, I think he's talking to Melvin. Okay. Uh, Ellis says, uh, now I'm a bedraggled father and look a lot more tired and hairier. <laughs> and he's busy saving lives, frontline NHS. Did I clap for Ellis? Did I fuck? I just had a go at him for not coming on the podcast. NHS, my ass. Just spends all day pulling things out of people's bottoms that they accidentally put up there. Uh, Rudy says, really, El Nenny needs to be given another contract. We yeah. both agree with that, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Melvin says, Martinelli is more of a striker than ESR. Uh, as soon as those words left my mouth, Melvin, I did think if anyone's going to get a go playing up front, it's not going to be ESR, it's going to be Martinelli. So should have yeah. put a Martinelli up front and then ESR on the left. He would oh. seem the more obvious choice if you're going to experiment. So had a bit of a quiet all... game today, though, didn't he? I understand why ESR could have maybe came on a bit earlier for Martinelli. Mm. He just didn't really look um, at it today. He didn't really seem to cause a, as much problems as he usually does. Quite true. Boy 10 says, I'm sorry, I just find the false nine ESR to be offensive at this point. <laughs> agree. I would agree with that. <laughs> it's uh... something I hope that we never have to go to. I really hope that that's something that we, are not in, that we don't have to ever go and try that, you know? Well, is that what Man City do, the false nine? No striker. Well, we kind of tried it, didn't we, in the semi-final? With oh. the do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And we tried it with Torreya under Emery. Torreya playing in that position. 
<laughs> Shit. And you got Tom, uh, so, you got Lacazette basically playing as a false eight at times. As a false player. Uh, some bloke says ESR is Magic Man Merce reincarnated. It certainly it looks like it. I think he can play up top in a false nine. Um, Boy Ten says Britland must be hella kinky if Ellis is doing that daily. Oh, Britain. Uh, do you be surprised the number of things Ellis has had to pull out of people's bottoms? Uh, we need a better plan against those lot for the North London derby. How do you think that's going to go, Stan? Because the next game is um, at home. I think we're at home to Leeds next week. And then that's so uh, next Sunday is home to Leeds. And then the next Thursday after that, I think it's a Thursday. I have no concept of time. So I don't know what day of the week it is. We've got Leeds before Tottenham. I thought the next game was Tottenham. So, uh, so we've got Leeds, nope. have we? Yeah, so the Leeds one is at two o'clock next Sunday, the oh, on the eighth of May. Yeah, sometimes I don't, even the twenty-four hour clock winds me up. And then the Thursday after that, we are playing uh, away at Spurs, and then the Sunday, another Monday. They've moved our Sunday game against Newcastle. They've moved it to the Monday because we've got Spurs midweek. So at least we're getting a little bit of a break because there was a bit of a worry that the Leeds Spurs Newcastle games are going to be three games in about six days. Well, it's not now. It's three games in eight games in eight days, which is much better, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm glad that we've got uh, another team in between as well, because hopefully with Leeds, it just gives us an opportunity that if we can get the job done against Leeds, we go into the North London derby with even more of a cushion points wise, hopefully, because what is it now? Two points. Two points um, or just two points above them, right? Because at one point they were above us, same amount of points, but they uh, they had us on the goal difference. Anyone think I know what I'm doing? This is the latest um, league table, and both played 34, and uh, we're two points ahead, but we've got seven less goal difference. Yeah. But if we go there, beating four 0 that'll do the job. Oh, who wouldn't? But want then that? they've got to they they've got to go and play Liverpool, haven't they? <laughs> Good luck with that. Weird-looking nonce. Someone walking past my window I don't like. Uh, I say my window. Garden. Yes, so that's um, guaranteed top six now, someone said the other um, earlier today. So we are eight points ahead of Man United, but they've got eight points. They've got nine points to get. So, yeah, there's still only there's one point chance. Man United... Uh, yeah, we get one more point, and then there we are guaranteed top six. And we're going to get that anyway, aren't we? Which is nice. Yeah. Um, Improvement. And then Spurs of uh, Spurs can't go to Liverpool and beat them, can they? I hope that was not. a bloody deep sigh. I really hope not. But you know, we've seen Tottenham get results against City, haven't we? Yeah. You know. I'm, I'm glossing over that though. I'm not interested in what they get up to. I wish I hadn't brought it up. Um, yes, uh, was it you that brought up Logan's run the other day? He was. He still got the picture. There you go. Boom. Never mind. Off we go. Uh, what else have we got here? In the notes, I have got 12 seconds. And then Rice got the right hump with Eddie. Did you see what didn't, started that? I didn't. I was doing something on, I was looking, I was almost on the sofa and it was one of those ones where I looked up and I'm like, What's, where did this start from? And he looked really angry at, uh, at Eddie. He just wouldn't leave it alone. Whatever it was, he weren't leaving it. He had plenty of opportunity to say what he had to say, but he was not leaving it. So I was going to ask you, what was the cause of that? Was it time-wasting for a free kick or uh, something? I vaguely remember... I think maybe that, that um, Eddie was offside or they, they'd got a free kick and Eddie stood over the ball and wouldn't let them get near the ball. And then when they shoved him, I think he caught the ball with him as he stumbled forward and was just because we've been massive time wasting and it was really getting on their nerves and the manager was shouting the ref was telling them to get on with it and the crowd were going mental I mean, the West Ham fans were mental anyway but uh, yeah anybody know in the um, in the chat explain in, uh, in a couple of sentences how that all how all that came about oh breaking news right off Ellis says I'm off to bath the little one and enjoy the rest of the show up the bum piss off Carl <gasps> off Carl. Carl's going to get a new car. You can't tell him to piss off Ellis. And uh, Ellis plans to be on the podcast of us in about 18 years time when uh, when Tallulah leaves home. So he's busy for 18 years. 
Um, ah, some bloke says Rice should have been booked. Ref cleared up the th the throng, and Rice went back for more. Rice has been an an argy cunt. I was quite surprised Eddie didn't stand up to him a little bit more. You these are the like in prison. You need to stand up with someone and give back as good as you're getting without getting booked. But actually, I think Eddie had already been booked, hadn't he? I thought Eddie, I thought it was quite funny that uh, Eddie wasn't re reacting, and that seemed to be winding up Declan Rice even more. That he wasn't get he wasn't getting a rise out of him, right? I mean, he wasn't yeah. walking away, Eddie, but he weren't. He wasn't backing away and walking away, but he wasn't rising to it either. Which Eddie got give, booked uh, in the 90th minute. Seemed to give um, him the needle. Yes, he was. Um, Steph says he loved how he that we riled them today. Boy says I'm gonna have to buy an Arteta jersey if he gets fourth. Been slandering him all season. <laughs> Phil says don't even think it's Danny. Nick has more chance with a nun than Spurs. Oh, Jesus, Nick, Phil, you, Nick are just gonna ban you. You need to behave yourself. You two have to meet outside some pub in Norwich and fisticuffs. Uh, and Chelsea are dropping. Yes, Crimson. Chelsea's lack of form at the moment is criminal. Really? Um, are they losing yeah. at the moment? Huh? Are they playing at the moment? No, they lost oh. um, at home today to... Lost away at Everton 1-0. Today, did they? Earlier? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm just going to go and have a look at Chelsea's um, form That's here. Our, our last game of the season is Everton, isn't it? It is. Hopefully, we'll have relegated them by then. Actually, I don't. I don't dislike Everton, but I don't really want them coming to us needing to to survive. Uh, yeah, Chelsea. They uh, they lost one nil away at Everton, drew one one away at Man United, then they beat West Ham one nil. They lost at home to us, then they had three wins, and they lost at home to Brentford, at home to Real Madrid. So not having a great time. It's a dodgy pitch, though, isn't it? That's what um, yeah. Tommy Tickle said. Oh, it's a bad pitch. Got yeah, a note from my mum. All the teams that beat them are playing on the same pitch. Ah, Dejan is there. Hello. Um, some bloke says, Eddie was really good today. His hold-up play has come on leaps and bounds in the last couple of games. And, uh, yeah, last-minute thing, Lekonga on for Odegaard. And Lekonga had the uh, miss of the game where he decided to run down the right wing after some good work from Smith Rowe, for good work from Eddie, Eddie out wide to Smith Rowe, Smith Rowe back across, and Laconga got it and went way and uh, put it in Rose's head. Do you understand the... why Eddie passed it out there? I thought that he could have maybe turned and got a shot away. I was hoping he was going to go and take it to the corner and do, do the Macarena on the corner or something like that. That's what he needed to do. Get it out, hold on to it, waste more time. But having a shot, that shows the... Um, uh, what's it when you're not very experienced? The inexperience of, of those players, Tavares yeah. and him and Eddie, and some of the decisions that they make. They need they need Erdegaard out there. Some of the times today, Erdegaard was running all the furthest player forward, and apart from the two centre backs and the keeper, the furthest player back, getting the ball the whole time. And Eddie was stood there, arms down by his side, going like that, what like watching a fly going round the room, going. Fucking you know, what's this? This bloke's been he's been on the monster full sugar all day. It was very impressive from Odegaard. I was very happy with it. Um, what else have we got in here? Uh, Rudy says David Moyles on Arsenal's second goal. Rob Holding is up to head it, he doesn't get it, and it hits his arm. It's not stopped. Oh, fuck off, Moyes. And then Rudy says, uh, if the referee sees it, he stops it, but I don't think he's seen it. Then they then put in the cross and score. Sour grapes, isn't it? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, yeah, well, okay. Mr. Moyes got short shrift there from Stan. Whatever. <laughs> and if you'd have been here, you could have put your hand in his face or whatever and then just walked off. Um, yes. So anything else you want to talk about from the game? Any, uh, any bits that tickled you? or? No, not really. Um, I'm just really glad that we secure those three points i mean it doesn't always have to be you know beautiful you know tiki taka football sometimes you've got to win a little bit scrappily and we managed to do that so um improvement there and i was so nervous for me that i think it was like the last 10 minutes i just couldn't relax because i was so <laughs> worried that especially when the man on the telly said i think yarmolenko came on and he said um he scored three times against arsenal coming off of the bench i was like i hate it when they tell you stuff like that on the telly I need to shut up because then I was just like sat there thinking it's going to be Yarmolenko, isn't it? It's going to be him, isn't it? 
So I was really glad that when that when the final whistle went, I couldn't go quick enough for me. Good. So if you had to sum today's game up in three words, people in the chat and Stan, only three words. How are you going to sum the game up? Come, people. What have you got, Stan? You have a little think. Very bloody scrappy. Oh, I felt. There we go. But glad, of, a... but glad of the points. Very glad of the three points. It's, it's still in our hands, right? I... It's still, it's still in our hands. We still, we go into the next game now. Leeds, surely with our towels up. Is that at home or away, Danny? The Leeds game. Home. A home game against Leeds. Well, th 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 there's got to be three points in there. And uh, who's Liverpool? Uh, who's Tottenham's next game in, before the derby? North London derby. Um, their one is they are away at Liverpool on the seventh of May, and then yeah, so, so we're if away. They, we're if, they don't get, if they cool. don't get nothing out of that Liverpool game, and we get everything against Leeds, that really puts us in a really good position. A cushion. Well, we play Leeds on Sunday the 8th at 2 o'clock and they play away at Liverpool on Saturday at 7.45. So the, the late game and then they've got to travel all the way back home, which is uh, oh, it's Chelsea that have to get the, the train home and they have to get the minibus home, isn't it? So uh, then they've got a, a game against uh, home to Burnley as well. So that's going to be a tough one because Burnley are one of the informed teams at the moment. They are, yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if, if if they don't get a result against Liverpool and we beat Leeds, that means we're going to be what five points clear of yeah. them. Yeah, games in hand. FC. Uh, let's go back and see. I think today I would uh, my three words was going to be uh, time wasting as one word. Time wasting masterclass. Some <laughs> blokes' three words are important. Three points. Yeah, Phil's is sloppy. Three points. Good one. Melvin's aggravation, aggravation on, on speed. speed. Ooh. Um, oh, here we go. Paulino Speciali says, You're wrong about Eddie. He is a late bloomer physically. I can't believe you can't see that. Even the Sky Pundits were bigging him up in Eddie We Trust. Uh, Paulino, I don't know if you've, you've probably not seen this before. I have been, uh, what the cool boy, all the cool kids say, bigging up. I have been, oh, hello, cat. What's that cat called? Tamina. Tamina. Hello. Um, I have been bigging up Eddie. Ever since he was playing, ever since we signed him from Chelsea uh, in the under 18s, the under 21s, which then become the under 23s, you go back and listen. The whole time I've been saying how good he is for the England under 23s, a magnificent player, he is not going to be able to do it at Premier League level, at the top six Premier League level. He could do it like maybe um, one of the um, Pookie does for Norwich or Mitrovic does at Fulham, that kind of strike where he's, he could be up and down or lower bottom half of the Premier League. He's never going to do it with Arsenal. I mean, you saw today, he just hasn't got what it takes. He's, he isn't quick enough at thinking. And it's not like he's not had enough games for Arsenal, and I'd love it. He's a Halen boy. He's an Englishman. He's one of our own. But he's never going to make it, sadly. So, um, so we can see it. Dejan says, we played bad, they lose, they worse. Maybe in um, your country, but Dejan, three is five. I don't know. I've never been there. Phil Macca says, how many times do you need to say Spurs play at Liverpool before you both remember? Because <laughs> I keep asking if we're home or away. Oh, I keep forgetting whether we're home or away. It's old age, Stan. We can't help it. It's, not even, lunch just... it's not even lunchtime here yet. It's still morning for me. Between us, we're over 100. I'm, these fuckers should be great if one of us have managed to turn the computer on, yeah. let alone any other shit. <laughs> some bloke says, I'll take going into the last game of the season having to beat Everton to secure St. Hottingham's Day. It will be over before then, some bloke. Don't you worry about it. Boy 10 says, we're, we've literally stolen the keys to the Lamborghini. And uh, Clock Orange says, Eddie is a champ champion. And he said champ champagne. He's a championship striker. And Phil says, basically, Eddie is Paul Dickov. Yeah, Paul Dickov. There's been, we've had a whole Paul Shaw was another one. Uh, no, no, not Paul Shaw. Paul Shaw has actually turned out to be absolute shit. Bless him. If you're listening, Paul Shaw, I'd like you to come on the podcast. If you're, if you're an ex Arsenal player, even if you only played for the reserves or the youths, let me know. At the underscore GFP. Come and find me. Don't bother tweeting the podcast, Greek, because I forget. Or email us. If you've got any questions, email us. A Bergkamp Wonderland at gmail.com. Send us stuff. Can't guarantee I'm going to read it. 
because sometimes it's my, I had to look at my own personal email account the other day. Five and a half thousand emails unread, Stan. <laughs> Bloody hell. I don't believe in email. <laughs> oh, here we go. Another quote from Rudy. Moyes on the Bowen Ramsdale incident. Bowen Ramsdale. What's that? I don't know what that was. Oh, where he comes sliding out. Yeah. The goalkeeper's reckless uh, and Jarrod gets... Oh, the goalkeeper's reckless and Jarrod gets there first. I think Jarrod rides a reckless, clumsy challenge. He skips over the goalkeeper and goes down. Fuck off. We've been through this before, boys. Fuck off. Um, some bloke says, no, nah, Eddie is Christopher Ray. Possibly. Oh. I'm not getting Liam Brady on the phone. Uh, Mr. Bobolex, who's been quiet tonight, says, well, I was a bit off of my score predictions earlier. I think Mr. Bobolex said 8-0 to the Arsenal. And now he's possibly put in here. Oh, struggity pussy game. Doing what you're doing. What is it about microphones that cats love? What do you want? It's because they know they're not allowed to touch it. That's what they want. So there we go. Wonderful game all in all. Three straight Premier League wins in a row. We shall be making it four when we play Leeds in a week's time. And in a week and a half time, we'll make it five as we beat Spurs. And then we'll be on to third. Can we get third, Stan? Oh, three points behind Chelsea. They're on their ass with their terrible pitch. Could it be done? It's possible. It's, <sighs> it's all within our grasp, isn't it, at the moment? Nothing's You're saying that right gone... now. Could you put your finger in your mouth like that as you're stroking your cat and going, <laughs> go for <laughs> Dr. Evil? <laughs> oh, Mr. Bond. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bond. <laughs> yes, I think you can make third, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Time for a mega pint. Good game. I don't know what a mega oh, pint is. Oh, for a mega is. pint, yeah. That's the uh, the Johnny Depp thing, isn't it? The Johnny Depp case, because there was one. Oh, the mega pint of wine. Yeah. What's a mega oh. pint? It's either a pint or it's not a pint. There's no such thing as a mega pint. Do you know what I mean? Um, Anna was showing me on TikTok. Someone's done a compilation of all the things. Is this what you? Is this your signature? Yes. Is this your signature? I've just told you it is. Yes. Is this your signature? The same one again. Yes, yeah. it is. So they are absolute a clown act, and he's he's loving it. Did you see but, the one uh, where the guy asked him a question and then objected to his own question? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> No, I he don't asked him a question, and then Johnny Depp was about to answer. And then the guy that asked the question went objection hearsay, and everyone was like, "But you asked the question. <laughs> and you object yourself?" <laughs> Look at Mister Boblex. He has gone pussy crazy. There Can is he? a whole load of moggies. I just should get a. Oh, here we go. Like Melvin says, half a hole. <laughs> uh, and Mister Boblex says, also known as a big sand pint. Yes, indeed. Oh, Mike Hurts turns up. What good? What better reason than to shut this shit down the minute he turns up, late as usual? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Right, Stan, uh, you got anything planned for the next few days? Can people find you giving out wise words anywhere? I don't think so. Probably just on the Arsenal fan circle on Thursday, as usual. Yeah. And uh, who knows? Sometimes one, of, one or two things may pop up in the week. Were you on the podcast of us this last week? You were, weren't you? Yes, I was. Oh. Ah. You know, I, I remember... Myself, you, not... Deacon and Nick. Oh, oh that's when I had to shush Deacon, didn't I? Because we're getting towards the end of the show. I went, shh. Because that was a Tavares. That was the Nuno Tavares show. The, the Nuno Jesus, Tavares that, special. That that's we why did. I blocked, blocked it out. We're coming to the end of the show and I had to go shush. We need to get on with this. I forgot we've actually got some questions. I thought we could answer these before we go. Right. Question from And says, Gabriel was making a habit of turning his back when facing down shots in the box. Because Shelney did this uh, as well back in the day. Is this a concern or not? Yeah, I did see that today. I don't I don't like to see that. The old hands and then turning around and all of that, you know. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just got to take one. As Xhaka found out, probably best to face it and have it deflect coming off of you. Uh, Phil Macker says, who would you rather help relegate, fat lamps or dirty leads? Oh, fat lamps for me all day long. Yeah. I like leads. I quite like Everton as well, but I don't like fat Frank Lampard. Fuck him. We both agree on that one. What's he ever Jimmy done H for me? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, Jimmy H, who is uh, standing there very casually holding his phone in the air with a, with a swimming pool behind him. Looks nice and warm. Brr. So uh, is anyone quite surprised for how strong a team they put out considering they have a massive midweek game? So does that show that other clubs now look at Arsenal in a different view? 
they were taking it seriously, weren't they? Oh yeah, I think there's there's been a time for a while where even struggling teams will look at the fixture list, see Arsenal coming up, rub their hands together and think, right, this can help us get our season back on track because they can pick up three, <laughs> we can get three points here, lads. Ain't like that no more. It's not like that anymore. I think that sort of that that reputation we seem to be getting rid of that. Um, why does someone put Stanley Lone Star Stanley? All right, London Lone Star Lone Star London. I should say. How are you? Hope you're well. Oh, you know him, do you? Yep. Good. Uh, BX says good point, to Jimmy. All right, all right. I've got his fan club. Uh, Jimmy says thanks. Hmm. We didn't get any thanks. Must be coaching. Jacko is the master at those, says some bloke. Where's Beard? Where's Bearded Guna? He did tweet that he might be making a comeback, but. He's a, he's out and about, isn't he? He's a, chasing he's dogs. Him, seen him out and about. Yeah. He's uh, chasing dogs with sticks. And we won ugly. Some bloke says, West Ham could have gone above United. They are a de- indeed. And Stefan says, teams are scared again. They are. Uh, Phil says, has Nick forgiven me? Well, if, if, he, if he blocks you again, times you out again, then you know he hasn't. Uh, Lone Star says, oh no, that's them two talking. Right, finish with that. Good to stop, Stan. One hour, one minute and 20 seconds. Have you any final words of wisdom? No, just that I'm going to go and get my sausage and egg McMuffin after this. Oh, dirty boy. <laughs> Tell you what I've got. Oh, fucking hell. Here we go, people. Sorry, those at home. A good bag. 30 bags of crisps from Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> I like my crisps like I like my women, cheap and dirty because they taste the best. <laughs> there is something, there is something about Tesco's own d- cheese and onion crisps. They're filthy, and they're dirty, and they sometimes taste all that much better. So uh, sorry if you're if you're listening to this hundred pounds, you just sounded like there was the end of the world coming up. Um, uh, oh, here we go! A wonderful way to end the show is uh, oh Graham Beercroft. Beercroft is a road near me. Won't give it away. I'll get stalkers. Um, Formerly Noza, late in, right at the end, a 94th minute substitution with I'm la- I'm too late, but hashtag Carpenter out. What a better way to end the show. Stan, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Everybody at ABW, thank you for coming on. You're all fired. And I might see you for a podcast on Wednesday if any of them fuckers turn up. Apart from that, up the Gunners. Brilliant result today. Champions League, here we come. Thank you very much and goodbye. See you later. Oh, we'll be back at 10 o'clock tonight with Mike, if he's sober. I think it's 10 o'clock. Come back then. Bye-bye.